Hi everyone, welcome to Awkward Author. My name is Lisa Grasso and this is my weekly blog and podcast about my sometimes awkward, always awesome, I think, author life. Coming to you on what is a pretty gloomy November morning. Although, although a little bit of excitement as I was setting this up, I was looking out the window and uh, I saw we are getting our first snow of the season here. I know I know some parts of the country are way ahead of us, um, and this was just like a few random snow flurries coming down, barely worthy of mention, but uh, but it's now officially snowed. We've now officially had the first snow of the year. Um, so for some people that's a depressing thing. I, I kind of like, you know, the snow as long as I don't have to, you know, travel in it and stuff like that. Um, it, it is quite pretty and peaceful, and I don't know, I've always enjoyed the winter, I guess. Anyway, um, after that digression, uh, speaking of digressions, I'm getting, I'm in a, I'm, in, I'm having a bit of a quandary uh, with the book I'm working on. So I made a little bit of writing progress since I talked to you last, I think. I don't remember where I was at, and I'm not even sure where I'm at word count wise. Probably, I think, just around 28,000 or so words, um, which is good, except. Well, here's the thing. I was working on this, on my book last week, and I had like sort of an epiphany moment. Um, I, I realized I, I was working on a scene and I had this character who kind of, you know, he, he has a purpose earlier in the book and then basically he, there wasn't really anything that he does later. And so I kind of just, you know, had him you know, exit in a very undramatic kind of fashion type of thing. And I realized, oh, you know, I'm writing, I'm writing a thriller here, you know, um, there's got to be action and adventure and murder and mayhem and all that good stuff. So, um, you know, I realized this character has to meet an unfortunate end. Um, so, you know, that was a great moment. It was like, ooh, this is awesome. And, you know, when I was working, I was, you know, like really psyched that I came up with this idea and can't, couldn't believe that I hadn't come up with it before because it seemed so obvious. Um, but then, then, uh, you know, after I'd done my writing for the day and, you know, was thinking about things more, I realized like, okay, well, this actually complicates things because now we have, we have this whole other, you know, issue that has to be dealt with and the book was already sort of complicated and now I've made things even more complicated and anyway, I, I, not that I painted myself into a corner because I don't think that was it, but it, it forced me to reevaluate things yet again um and and take you know another step back and look at so I'm, I'm really struggling with this book you know i i thought i knew the story going into it and i'm finding out that i don't and and the problem i think for me is that i have you know because there's the two storylines and the one is one that carries on through the three books and both of these have to get wrapped up at the end of this book um, obviously i could extend it and make it more than trilogy but that wasn't my plan and you know i I think this will work, but I do have to, you know, change. I do have to make more changes to how things go. And basically, because of that, I haven't done as much writing because I've done more um, writing of notes and outlines and, you know, reconfiguring outlines. And, and I worked on that a lot yesterday to the point where I'm now like, okay, I think I can see how this is all going to work just about a um, little bit of finagling I still have to do to kind of get the the one storyline and the other storyline to kind of match up so we don't get a point where it's like okay you know we're get to a boring spot or something like everything kind of has to has to come to a head at the same time I guess we'll say and and I also am struggling to make sure everything like ties together neatly and and that's the biggest struggle because you know you kind of have these two separate storylines and you got to bring them together and it has to make sense and you know, I, yesterday when I was basically at the middle of the day trying to figure things out, I mean, I ended up like, you know, I was just making notes and then one of my notes was like, why is this book so complicated? You know, with complicated and capital letters, exclamation points. Uh, you know, this is just a note to myself, obviously, but um, it was just like when my frustration was just like reaching a, a boiling point then. So, you know, it's... Uh, it can be tough sometimes, um, you know, plotting out a book, especially when you thought you already had it plotted out. And then you come to find that maybe, maybe you didn't quite get it right the first time there or the second time, as the case may be. So yeah, that's, that's the, the stuff I've been dealing with. And like I said, this is my first time working on, you know, sequel series of books. Um, it's, 
it's a different challenge than, you know, just writing a single book because, you know, when you have a single book, you can, you know, well, you know, you just have one story and you wrap it all up at once. Um, and then when you have a story that you're trying to carry over from, you know, through three books, you got to keep, uh, you know, the tension and momentum going, I guess, through the books and also have a satisfying conclusion at the end. So, yeah, um, that's that's something that I am struggling with. It's a new challenge for me. I think I think I'm gonna get there. I'm not really too worried, but uh, yeah, it's uh, it's been an interesting experience, I guess. As a result of that, um, obviously, I didn't get much writing done, and I'm just taking a little bit longer, I guess, to get this book written than the the first two books, and. I am making some changes that will entail, I think, some changes in those previous two books, but I kind of expected stuff like that to happen. So I'm not that that's I'm not too concerned about it. And that's one of the reasons too that I didn't go ahead and like, you know, work on edits or anything um, for those books because I wanted to get everything written first and then be able to go back and and modify things and stuff. And and that is one benefit of being um, you know, an indie author, being a self-published author, you can kind of, you know, you can, you can do this, you can, you know, take the time to write the whole series first, go back, fix everything, um, you know, get it all right before you publish. Um, obviously you could do that in traditional publishing too, but generally that's not how it works. Um, you seldom sell a whole series at once, you usually sell one book, and then if it does well, they pick up the next, and and that sort of thing. So, um, and then of course, you know, because you're doing it that way, you're usually writing the first book, um, and then you don't write the second until, you know, after the first has already at least been accepted for publication. Um, and so it, it's much more difficult to, you usually don't have the ability to go back and make changes in the previous book. So um, that is definitely a benefit in doing it this way. Now, obviously, if you're an indie author, you could also choose to, you know, write the first book, publish it, and then write the second book. But, um, you know, if you want to do some kind of rapid release type thing, that's probably not going to work. And uh, yeah, anyway, so, you know, it, it depends on how you want to do things. And for me, um, especially since this was my first time um, doing a series or trilogy, that is one of the reasons I wanted to get it all written first and, you know, get the whole thing done and, you know, then be able to go back and, and make changes before I publish a single one of them. So that's that's how I'm doing it. We'll see how it all goes in the end. Uh, speaking of... I guess, traditional publishing. Uh, there's an interesting article this week on the book blog, book, on the book bub blog, say that three times fast. It's like the book bub partners blog, I think it's called, um, you know, for the people that advertise or, you know, have, you know, apply for future deals on book bub. So generally authors or possibly publishers or whatever. Um, and this was a blog post uh, written as a guest post by an author, by a traditionally published author. Hang on, let me look up her name. Yes, by the author. Her name is Christina McDonald, and she is a traditionally published author, and she had the goal of getting her book, um, you know, getting on the USA Today bestseller list, um, which she had not been able to do. Now, this was a, a book that had already been released. It had already been out there, um, traditionally published and, you know, it did okay, but it didn't make a uh, bestseller list. So she wanted, you know, she had a very specific goal. She wanted to get on a list. Um, and I, I guess she said USA Today um, as the list um, and used BookBub as well as other, um, you know, ad ad advertising platforms or book promotion platforms, whatever you want to call it, to get her book there. Um, and so you can read the whole post. It's on, yeah, it's the BookBub Partners blog. And uh, very interesting how she did it. Um, definitely, I think a lot of takeaway tips there if you too are interested in getting a bestseller list or even just, you know, selling more copies of your book. Um, it, it's interesting because her book is a, a, a traditionally published book. So uh, she doesn't have control over pricing. Um, you know, she has to, you know, she had to work with her publisher to do that. She couldn't even submit it for the featured deal herself. The publisher has to do that. Um, and, you know, set the, you know, pricing. It wasn't um, a freebie book. She did it as a, you know, a paid book. Uh, so they submitted a feature deal. I think it was $1.99. Um, they submitted it for and, you know, she promoted it there as well as elsewhere. Now, she paid 
for the BookBub feature deal, I believe, um, even though the publisher submitted it and then paid for additional BookBub ads and, uh, you know, paid to promote it elsewhere as well. And, um, you know, spoiler alert, she did make the USA Today bestseller list. Um, and according to her, the ad was prof the, the, the promotion was profitable. Um, I, I'm, I'm not, not that I'm not, don't believe her. I just wonder how she has that information because I've been traditionally published author myself. Um, and I know, you know, having access to sales figures, maybe her, her publisher is very upfront with her about it. I mean, they were able to work with her to do this and that is actually kind of exceptional. Um, you know, you, you don't always get that kind of uh, support from a, a publisher when you're traditionally published, but, um, yeah, so they might have been sharing data with her because generally when you're an author, you don't, it's not that you're flying blind, but you don't have um, certainly the access to, you know, sales data that you have when you are a, an independently published or self-published author. Um, but it, it's definitely an interesting read um, and definitely some good tips for anyone who's looking, um, you know, for ways to do paid promotion for their book using BookBub or even other platforms and um, some interesting things in the article. So um, definitely check that out. And then uh, the other blog post I read this week that I found interesting, um, Christine Catherine Rush, uh, if you're familiar with her, she is an author. Uh, she was originally traditionally published. Um, she, she's been published in multiple genres. I think of her as a science fiction author, um, certainly under the name Christine Catherine Rush. I think that's what she's most known for, but she's published in other genres using other pen names as well. Um, but she has, um, and she's been a guest on Joanna Penn's, uh, podcast multiple times. So I'm sure you've, you've probably seen her, her read about, you know, something that she's written out there. Cause she's pretty, uh, she's pretty well uh, represented on the interwebs as we say. Um, but, uh, she wrote, she's been, she writes a series of posts called business musings. Um, I'm trying to think. They usually come out on the same day of the week, and I'm not sure what day of the week it is actually that it comes out, but her business musing posts are, are usually pretty interesting, and she's been doing an ongoing series on licensing. Uh, she attended a licensing expo. She lives in Las Vegas. They have a, a licensee licensing expo there and she attended it a couple of years, I believe, um, and, you know, picked up a lot of tips, learned a lot of things from it, and so she's been, you know, writing ongoing series of stuff about that. Now, this particular post, the most recent, well, I don't know, she might have another one out before this, uh, this, this episode comes out, but one of the most recent posts in this series, it was on in the licensing series, but what I found more interesting is she was really delving into author mindset, in particular authors any authors, but especially authors coming out of like the traditional publishing model type of thing. And um, you could read the whole post to get the whole gist of it, but generally what it was is they were trying to do, she was working with an author class and they were, you know, doing sort of like a role play thing related to licensing. And um, the authors were struggling to get it because, um, you know, in this particular scenario, like the authors were the ones that had the advantage. They were coming from like a, you know, uh, not an authority position, but like, you know, the a, a position of advantage and, you know, had the upper hand type of thing, I guess is what I mean to say. And for authors, like that is a tough concept to grasp because in, in publishing, especially in traditional publishing, like the mindset is that, you know, publishers hold all the cards and then maybe agents and then, you know, and authors are like very low on the totem pole. Um, and it, it shouldn't be that way. And it doesn't have to be that way. And it isn't true for all authors. Not all authors have that mindset, but um, the bulk of them do. And it, it's kind of the way the industry has built itself. And it's, um, you know, it's not really healthy and it, it doesn't make any sense when you think about it. Like, obviously, you know, publishers or authors are the ones creating the books, um, you know, creating these stories. So shouldn't they have, um, you know, a higher position, but the way it works in publishing, they don't traditionally. Um, and it, it's so interesting and um, just kind of related to that, the author, uh, uh, Amy King, A.S. King, uh, she tweeted something last week or early this week. It was just such a, you know, I think it was like over the weekend. It was just like a, you know, a random thing. She was at some conference or something and 
she she just made the comment that like you know sometimes as as authors you know especially in traditional publishing uh you forget when you're talking to like the general public like people who aren't you know involved in the industry that they aren't aware of the traditional 90 10 split um which is how traditional publishing works where you know when a book is sold um an author re receives 10 percent of the proceeds and the other 90 percent goes to the publisher and it's that's the way it is you know that's the way it's always been um and that's just normal and that's how traditional publishing works and she was just saying you know sometimes you know people you, you don't even realize that you that you know you have to explain that to the general public because they don't know that and they don't get that and that's all she was saying and <laughs> it was just funny because I, I feel bad for her. I mean, I know her. Um, she's somewhat local. I've, you know, I've gone to multiple book signings that she's had. I've gone to conferences with her, stuff like that. Um, and she's a really nice, cool, awesome person. But um, and she just like put this out there, not as like a complaining thing or anything, just saying, you know, this observation or whatever. And um, someone like, you know, made this like very snarky kind of reply i assume it was somebody either who works for a publisher or somewhere you know on the other side of the fence in publishing but it was like yes but you know publishers you know you have to keep in mind publishers pay for cover designs and pay for edits and and do marketing you know and like all this stuff and it was like well you know we know that i mean everyone knows that but it was like you know, like, he wasn't complaining about it. And the, the, the reply was like, whoa, you know, like, you know, it was like she opened up this can to worms or whatever. And uh, yeah, it's, it's just interesting. Um, you know, it is a crazy thing, the way publishing works. And, you know, the, the mentalities as far as traditional publishing goes and the way, you know, authors are paid and treated. It's, it's interesting. I mean, I, I'm not bashing traditional publishing. I, I guess I have to put that out there because somebody's going to think that I am when I say these things. It's just, you know, that's the way it is. And, you know, you have to choose what's right for you and right for your book. Um, and it shouldn't be like self-publishing shouldn't be something you do as a last resort. Like I can't, I can't get traditionally published, so I'll, I'll self-publish. I mean, that's probably not the best reason to self-publish. I mean, I think you have to weigh your options and, and figure out what works for you um, and works for your book because there's some books that just probably aren't going to work that well um, as a self-published book just because of the way the market works. But, um, you know, it's... It, I, I won't say the, the publishing model is broken. I don't think it totally is. But I think you know, it's something you have to really consider, you know, getting a publishing contract, getting a traditional publishing deal is great and it can open doors for you. It can do a lot of things, you know, can help you get your book out there, but also is it, you know, something that makes the most financial sense for you? Is it what you really want? And, um, you know, it, it's just some things to consider, like even just considering marketing. I mean, you know, I shared that post um, that author did. Um, now she's like really the exception. Most authors are not doing that kind of paid promotion for their books. And it's it's very difficult to because of things like that 90-10 split and because you don't have access to, you know, the sales data to see if your marketing efforts are, are working um, the way you want them to. So um, just, uh, you know, if, if marketing is something you're interested in, um, and doing paid marketing, then probably, you know, traditional publishing isn't um, how you want to go because, you know, your publisher may do some paid marketing for you, but you aren't usually going to have control over that. Um, and, you know, you can't even really necessarily count on that unless it's specifically like in your contract what they're going to do, which um, a lot of contracts just don't have that language in there. Um, and you could fight for that, um, you know, or, you know, have your agent fight for that. But again, that's not really standard. So, um, you know, just something to consider. Um, you know, and going back to Christine Catherine Rush, like I said, she was a traditionally published author. Um, she had some bad experiences with an agent who, you know, did not treat her, uh, you know, fairly and, uh, you know, ended up taking money from her. So she has a very negative view of, you know, traditional publishing and the, you know, the agency model and stuff um, because of her bad experiences. So 
Uh, that doesn't mean, you know, don't consider traditional publishing. That doesn't mean self-publishing is the way to go. It means, you know, look into things, um, be informed, educate yourself um, about how things work. And I think, you know, authors really need to, you know, as Christine Catherine Rush says in her post, we need to um, work on, you know, fixing our mindset and, you know, thinking of ourselves as having more power as, you know, being creators and, and we have to, you know, think of ourselves as having the upper hand and, and having, um, you know, something that we're bringing to the table that, you know, makes us and our work a valuable commodity. And, you know, we have to kind of see ourselves that way, which uh, unfortunately, you know, it's going to take some time, I think, to shift perceptions that way. But um, I, I think it would be a healthy thing overall. So that's what I got for you this week. It looks like the snow has all stopped out there, what little there was. And um, I've got some work cut out for me today, so I am going to wrap things up. Hopefully this week, uh, it's, it's a busy time of year, so I don't know how much work I'm going to get done on my book, but um, hopefully I can get the last of that outline hammered out to where I feel like it's going to work well and then move along and uh, do some more writing. But uh, like I said, it's busy. I don't know how much I'll get done, but I'll see what I can do. So thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. I put out new episodes of Awkward Author each week. Um, it's available as both a vlog on YouTube and a podcast, wherever you listen to podcasts. And uh, if you would like to know more about me and my books, you can visit my website, which is alissagrasso.com. That's A-L-I-S-S-A-G-R-O-S-S-O.com. And so thank you guys. And I'll be back sharing some more uh, awkward author wisdom with you next week. So take care. Happy writing. Have a great week, everyone. <laughs>